at the end of the video, this is the project you should have. I've done this in 3.5, but I'm going to do it in Godot 4 because it's drastically changed. I can remove tiles, I can add tiles, I can add grass, and walls. So let's get into it. I want to make a new Godot project. I need no 2D as the main, and then save it. This will be your automatic scene that you load up into. I've already did art into my project, and it's 16 by 16. I'm going to add a new tile set, tile map, <clears throat> and in that tile map, I'm going to add in a new tile set. You'll notice that it's 16 by 16 by default, but if you've got different art sizes, I would recommend changing this. Now I'm going to go to my tile set at the bottom, and you'll see it's empty, so I'm going to add in my tiles. There's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it the most obvious way, and I'm going to allow yes. I'm going to select them. And now if you go to tile map, you'll notice that we can now paint them. So I'm going to go to the project, project settings, and I want you to go to the input map and put MB right, MB left, and make sure the mouse buttons correspond to it. Then in tile map, we're going to go to the attach script and allow it to be called tile map. And I'm going to remove the funk because we don't really need it. Here we're going to check for the mouse button presses. Is just we want action pressed. This means when you hold it down, it'll constantly paint left. And I'm just going to say print left. And I'll do the same again for right. So left is going to be placing and right is going to be removing. Now, one thing before we start here, we need to understand what's happening with the tile set. Here, we'll notice, oh, let me find it. Here we have layers, and this is layer zero. You'll also notice source zero and the atlas coordinates of each texture. You'll notice they're going up by one. So now this is 2.0. This is quite important, it's very different from how Godot 3 did it. So we're going to just place some dirt. So to do that, we're going to go set cell. We know that layer, which is here, is zero. We also now need to know whereabouts are we putting it on the tile map. It's not as simple as just going, oh, just place it where the mouse is. We have to convert it into the tile map coordinates. And to do that, we're going to say local to map. So this way it converts global to tile set. We're going to get the, we're going to get our global mouse position. Now you'll see the source ID. And like if you click on it, you'll see zero, each one zero. If you add another one, it'll be one, two, three, etc. So we'll say zero for this one. And finally, we want the actual coordinates of where it's positioned in here. So we know the dirt map is zero, zero. So that's a vector two. Now, if I press play, I should be able to paint. There we go. If I right click, nothing happens. So we'll resolve that. In fact, we can go here. And we could just say minus one. So it's basically looking up something that doesn't exist. It doesn't give an error or anything. And if I right click, there you go. Now that is what my previous tutorial is. I'm going to expand on this. So if you want to carry on, please do. If not, that's okay. This project will be up on GitHub. If you just don't want to do the code, just play along with it. So you'll notice that we're reusing code. I don't really like doing that. And what we can do now is set tile at mouse. This way it's just easier we would have to replicate and it also means that we can add in many more 
tiles without having to add a lot more code. So we know the layer is an int, and I'm going to say by default it's zero. We know the ID is also an int. It's I'm going to say by default it's zero. And lastly, we've got the type. We know that's going to be a vector two. So I'm going to say type. Um, that's a vector two. And by default, we'll just make it the block. Uh, the mud block, sorry. And then, oh, have I missed something? Oh yeah, we didn't set. Oh yeah, I didn't set it. Sorry about that. There we go. And then I should say set cell. We want layer. Then we want the local, in fact, let's just copy and paste it because I'm lazy. And we want the ID. And finally, we want the type. There we go. So let's save this. Now, this is a lot easier to type because we just say set tile. As for the layer, we will say zero. Zero. And finally, where it's positioned. There you go. Now, the great thing about this is if we go to the tile map, we want to change this to a wall. What's that? That's well, it's 2.0, so we can just change it here to, and that should now paint walls. I'm going to do the same again, but this time I'm going to do something different. So it's I'm going to, want to delete something. We'd say minus one, minus one. Brilliant. Now, instead of having to have false code, so hard coded, you should never do that. So we're going to set up some variables, and I'm going to copy and paste them across because I already know what they are. So we've got the dirt, which we know is zero zero. We've got the grass, it's one zero, and the wall, which is being a bit bizarre because I did a mistake. There we go. So now we can actually use words. So we've got the dirt. And I won't go on, but so on. So what would be really nice is having a little GUI so we can determine what we're going to do. Right now, with this code, I can only place dirt and remove it. So we're going to make a new node. It's going to be a canvas layer. And we're going to add in a hbox. And hbox, we're going to add in buttons. So let's do a button. While the button's selected, press Control D. Control D, brilliant. And I'm going to name the first one dirt, grass, and finally wall. I want this hbox to be at the bottom of the screen, like this, and I think that would be better if it was centered. Great. And then on the canvas layer, I want to add in a script. Um, let's just call it GUI. And then we want to connect the buttons to the GUI. Now, before we do this, we need a game manager because what Every time I press a button, I'm going to up the game manager to say the selected tile has changed to such and such. We don't have that at the moment, so let's go into res, create a new script. Oh, let's just call it GM. And in the GM, we want to add in... 
vartarm id so basically we're just going to update this with the coordinates of our tile oops save and cause GUI as well so we save the node now we need to hook up the buttons so they make more sense so button dirt in fact I should do better than that because it's bad practice go back disconnect button and let's call it do the same for button 2 which I know is grass oops and finally wall You'll notice that we want to update the tile ID. So, dirt pressed, we know from looking at the tile map is 0.0, .0 then we know it's 1.0 and 2.0. There you go. So, let's say GM. Oh no, where is it? Nope. Bit silly, but go to your project. You can't access something because you need to define it as a global. So let's do that. You can tell it's been a while since I've done any tutorials. So now we should have GM. There we go. And we've got the tile ID and we know that dirt is 0.0, .0 so vector two. We're gonna just copy and paste to grass and to wall. Don't forget to update the actual vectors. Great. Now, issues at the moment, nothing will change. We do need to go back to the main. And now, instead of saying just dirt, we're going to say gm dot title tile ID. Oh, and it would also help if we <laughs> attach the uh, GUI to it. There it is at the bottom. So let's paint a wall. I'm so glad that worked because right now I keep making mistakes. And some grass around it. You get the picture. So I'm sorry about the terrible art. I made it for the project. I uh, will have this up on GitHub. It will be in the description along with our Discord server. I'm being a lot more active at the moment, so if anyone has questions or wants to work on the project, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Thanks very much. Take care.